So you want to be a prophet? Let me go ahead and hit you to this topic. First things first, dust off your feet. Christianity, you got to drop it. The way of the world is not knowledge. You can't learn this wisdom in college. You better repent of your sins. You're going to lose some friends, but endure to the end. Don't be sadist. So let me show you how to move, little buddy. I'm going to teach you truth, everything new, little buddy. Don't listen to these pastors. They so fools, little buddy. You gon' see opposition, but stay cool, little buddy. This the truth. Uh, just trust the process. If you're diligent, you will see progress. Holy Spirit, it's the end. You a prophet. Meditate day and night to see success. So you gotta make a. Let me, let me show you how to. Yeah. So you wanna be a prophet. Well, you know you need a God. You say you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need guidance. Yeah, so you want to be a prophet. Built for the ministry, fit for the battle. Go to war against the enemy. Gotta fight the sin with the same big energy. Hit them all wounds with the word, that's the remedy. Better call a doctor, really seek counsel. Go number one, get a gate with a bouncer. Big black angel in it, ain't no way around them. Late for the fakes that you don't wanna drown in. Hot damn, nation on the brain. Then you gotta change. Set your house in order and reform your ways. Stand up like a man, give it all you can. Couple that with fear, then you'll understand. Never be ashamed, world without end. Going hard for the Lord like time 10. You can never do enough when you serve it. God bless with a purpose. And you can't pay for the spirit, nope. Baptized in his name, not a sin of soap. If your mind ain't right, you can never get it. You can forget it, no repenting and get forgiven. It don't mix with iniquity, got me bitter like Philip. Then you need a man, need a God through the scripture. To come and sit with you, see Christ in the verse, leadership. Paint pictures, 144 k high definition. So you want to be a prophet. Well, you know you need a God. You say you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need guidance. Yeah, so you want to be a... That's a real good feeling low-key. Knowing God can make a profit out of little old me. It's refreshing to hear words of life. Got me feeling like I could be something better than the things that I see. Because I was raised in the valley of death with no leaders. Pastor just teach for a check, no real preachers. OGs tell us take drugs, tote heaters. But where the hell is that going to lead us? Man, look, it's getting old. It ain't no father figures in the home. So we had to figure it out on our own. How to be a man just to figure it out later on. Check, 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 check. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, bless. I was Michael here out of the Houston camp. I'm going to get ready to send up the prayers. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Blow trumpet. Trumpet down. This is from the book of Psalms, chapter 5 and verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou defendest them, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. Hey, check, check. All right. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, bless. I'm Officer Michael here. Who I got with me? This is Officer Neil. I'll be reading for you today, Officer. All right. All praise to the Most High. All right, it's another edition of Daily Bread, Daily Bread, Daily Bread. All praise to the Most High for another opportunity to bring forth another class. Of course, it's always, uh, whenever I do a class, rather, it's always pretty much catered to the newer people um, walking in this faith of keeping God commandments because that's what we uh, teach. We teach keeping God commandments. So we got to come back to our heritage, the law, statutes, and commandments that God gave the children of Israel, which who we be. We are the children of Israel. 
All right. So uh, we're going to open up with uh, the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis. Okay. The reason why we open it up here is because a lot of people think that um, maybe uh, Moses first came with uh, the dietary law. And then after that, Paul came and did away with the dietary law. That's what people might think. But we're going to see, was it before Moses God said some of our clean beasts and unclean beasts? Or did Moses say that first? Did he first give it to Moses? Let's see. Read that. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 7 and verse 1. Come on. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Right. So first off, he's telling you about a righteous man. So that means that he was following God, obeying God, way back in the book of Genesis. Okay? But somehow today, we think we ain't got to follow God and keep his commandments. All right? It's far from the truth. Come on. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. Now, wait a minute now. Now, God calls something a clean beast. Now, how do we forget that? So that's why you got to go back in his laws and see what did God consider a clean beast. Read. The male and his female, and a beast that are not clean by two. So now he talk about the beasts that are not clean. So we're going to read about some of the unclean and the clean beasts today. That's what we're going to go into. Read. Beasts that are not clean by two, uh-huh. the male and his female. Read. A fowls also of the air by seven. You see that? Also the fowls he talked about. Okay, read. The male and the female. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Read. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Uh-huh. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. You see that? So he said he's going to destroy every substance. But he's going to reserve those that was put in the ark, the clean and the unclean. Read. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. There go again. You see, commandments was around before. He said to Moses, tell the children of Israel, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. This is what thou shalt do. It was already in place. Read. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Read. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Come on. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not, that are not clean. Read that and again. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean. You see that? So ain't no way getting around that. You better find out what God talking about. That's why it's so important to learn God dietary law. What he told us what is a clean beast and an unclean beast. Read. And of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. You see that? So there are certain things that we can eat. Fowls and things that creepeth upon the earth and things that we cannot eat. Read. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. Read. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the what earth. What verse you at? Verse 10. Uh, I only wanted verse 9. Uh, read 9 again. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. As God has commanded Noah. Okay, so he told him about the clean beast and the unclean beast. All right, so now, today... What do we consider a clean beast? All right. The world, they eat in and everything because it's not according to God's laws. They're not living by God's laws, not by any means. And we're supposed to see that in a few um, little clips we got for you today as well as some articles. All right. Let's look at this first little clip. Going to show you about what you should and should not be eating. Come on. Look at that. Oh, my God. What is that? So you had a tumor in pork. A tumor in pork. Guess what? That's an unclean beast. All right, but we're going to get it out of the scriptures. Let's get that next one. We're going to get it out of the scriptures for you, what you should be eating and should not be eating. All right, so watch this.
pigs are scavengers. They eat pretty much everything from nuts and grains to corpses and feces. And actually you may not know that pigs digest what they eat really quickly and they don't sweat. So both of this cause a buildup of toxins. So on the PETA website, it says that a pig farm with 5,000 animals produces as much fecal waste as a city of 50,000 people. And in 1995, 25 million gallons of pig's urine and feces spilled into the North Carolina River, immediately killing between 10 and 14 million fish. So now to get around water pollution limits, factory farms turn tons of urine and feces into liquid waste that they spray into the air. For it to be inhaled by whom? The people that live nearby, obviously. Pigs are actually treated really badly in most parts of the world, no surprise. UK is slightly better, but still low standards. A pig turns out eight plus piglets in just four months, that's why. And on top of that, they get to their desirable weight of slaughter really quickly. So some US slaughterhouses slaughter up to a thousand pigs an hour. There is no way that that is done in the best conditions or standards. So actually pigs are meant to be quite clean animals if given the space to breed naturally, but we know that that doesn't really happen. So it says that around 70% have pneumonia at the time of their death, leading to slaughterhouses putting them on a prophylactic or steady course of antibiotics leading up to the slaughter. But that actually creates superbugs that can affect us and affect our ability to recover from sickness. So parasites like trichinosis found in undercooked pork, uh, and let's not forget swine flu too. Now, pork contributes to weight gain, blocked artery, which increases your chances of heart disease, diabetes, and also cancer. Some of that's no surprise, as, as we know, processed meat is classified as a carcinogen. But just 25 grams, or should I say 25 grams of processed meat per day is linked with a 44% increased risk of dementia. And it's also linked to asthma exacerbation. Well, finally, pigs share 84% of their genetic material with humans. That's where we get our insulin from, our heart valves, even our lungs as per some transplants from. So now eating a pig is kind of like eating a human which is cannibalistic. And actually, after a long time of this behavior, your insides begin to deteriorate and reject it because it's so similar to your own makeup. All right, all right. So now, now we want to go back and I wrote down the six points that she said. So we want to touch on these six points that she said, six reasons why you should stop eating pork. Hey, can you pull that, go back and pull that up one time? uh the last video okay is there any kind of way you could roll up and let's read up under what she says like like no we're gonna go back go back go back go back all the way back and roll it up roll it up we want to see where her name is yes okay roll it up i want to see i want to read that i want to read that all right so let's put that on the screen this is the reason why I want to read that. Read the first line up there before it say hashtag doctor. Let's read that out. Here a, are need a reason. Need a reason to give up pork? Here are six. And didn't even mention religion. That's the reason why I want to read that. You can go to the next one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go up. So that's the reason why I want to read that. All right, we're done with that. We're done with that. Now we're gonna touch the six um things that she said. We're going to touch the six reasons why she said that. And guess what she said? And she didn't even mention religion. I forgot to bring that out. Uh. <laughs> so now, okay. let's go. The first point that she said, what you got, up? Uh? Reason number one, they are scavengers. She said they are scavengers. Now, here is the backdrop of some of the things she said. They are scavengers. Read. They eat anything, including dead carcasses. They don't even sweat, which causes a buildup of toxins. They have a buildup of toxics. Guess where that toxic go? When you consume it, it it's in you now. Okay, just like we just seen that that um that first clip of the tumor in that pork. Guess what? That would be in you if you consume it. It said eat anything and it don't sweat. We're gonna get into that as well, because it's all in the scriptures. Read. What's the next? Point number two. Uh-huh. The, uh, pollution. So now she talked about how 
the pigs is bad for the pollution. But let's see. But you might not know what they do with the pig stuff. Watch this. What's the what's some of the things that she said? Their urine and waste is turned into liquid and sprayed in the air to be inhaled by people nearby. You know what some people might not even consider? Chemtrails. <laughs> you, I'm just saying, some that they spray across. Now, look, here's uh, some else they said they have an organist documented what they do with their urine and their waste. Spread in the air for people to inhale nearby. You might not even been aware of these type of things, but it's happening. Okay. What's the next point? Their warfare. Their warfare, like the their conditions when they're being slaughtered. What did she say? They get to the desirable weight very quickly. So you see that? So a pig, he can get to his desirable weight very quickly. Come on. Propylatic slaughtered in good in poor conditions. In poor conditions. They're slaughtered in poor conditions, and you consume it. And you consume it every day. Come on. What's the next point she made? Point number four. Super bugs. So she said that they create super bugs within them. Come on, what's the point she made? Most pigs have pneumonia at the time of their de- death. You see that? Most pigs have pneumonia at the time of their death. So you're eating something, a beast that is unclean, that God said is unclean. And now look at all the proof that is right here in the pudding, in history. It, it is written how unclean they are. They're slaughtered in poor conditions. They have pneumonia at the time of their death. Read. And they are put on prophylactic antibiotics, which create superbugs, which affect us and our ability to get over sickness. Don't forget about swine flu. That's what she said. These are points that she said she pointed out to you. She a doctor. She understand these things. And, but we understand them as well when we obey God's dietary law. Okay, so she said they create superbug, which will affect us, and it's hard for us to get over sickness. As a matter of fact, it gives us a lot of sicknesses. Now, here we go. Now it's going to get into the, what's the next one? Point number five, health problems. The next one is the health problems. You get health problems from eating unclean beasts, which is the swine. Read. Weight gain. So now, by eating pork, this is an effect that it could give you. Weight gain. Cancer. It could give you cancer. Dementia. A lot of people don't understand why they have dementia at 60 years old. Right? They don't understand that. Why is she she okay at this age, but she not? He okay at this age, but he not. Why is that? You got They got to think about these things. Consider what God said, don't do. And then history shows you what happened to the people who consume these things. And over time, this is, it affect their health. Read. Heart disease and blocked arteries. That's what it causes for you. Heart disease and blocked arteries. Now, are you going to take it from a woman in the world who studied these things or what God? God had already laid the law. She just come behind God and she said she ain't going to mention, and it wasn't mentioned in religion. Her contract goes there. She didn't, but the Bible mentioned everything she's saying. Read the next, the last point. Last point, point number six. Mirror humans, insulin, heart transplant, lungs, etc. That's what she said. Why we shouldn't consume? Because they mirror humans. They mirror humans because we get, what do the doctors do? They give you their um, parts, like the lungs and the heart transplant. You'd get all of those things from a unclean beast that you consume. All right. Now, let's see. Let's hit the point about the health reasons because she was really on health really that was the main points why she was doing that because of health why you shouldn't eat it consume it because it's going to do something to your body and these are the things that they do they carry the way they are treated things like that she went over all of that but it all was going into your consumption right your health all right now let's read this oh sirach this is the book of sirach chapter 38 and verse one come on honor a position with the honor due unto him for the the uses which ye may have of him. For the Lord hath created him. So Most High had created the physician. Okay, the Most High created him. Yes, true enough. But you see what, what, in some ways, what they say, heart transplant from the pigs and things, you think God created him to do those type of things? Of course, like a, a person, you know, with the same blood and all that transfer a horse and things like that. But this is from an animal. 
okay? But he said he made him for good reasons. Read. What's my next? Uh, give me verse 12. Then give place to the position, for the Lord hath created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. You see that? We need the physician. Yes. You need the physician. Okay? He's good. God made him. Like I say, you can have some, some things going on where you might need surgery. Okay, it's, it, it's, it might be possible that there's no other way around it but to get surgery. The Bible says God made it. That's why people send up prayers, and if it be the Lord's will, when they're having these type of operations. Read. Verse 13. Uh huh. There's a time when in their hands there is good success. You see that? Oh, how, how did it go, doctor? Oh, everything went well. They come back with good reports. Read that again. There is a time when in their hands there is good success. There is good success. A successful surgery was made by the physician. Read. For they shall also pray unto the Lord. You see that? So that's why you got to have a godly man or woman performing these things on you and doing it according to God's laws. Read. That he would prosper that uh -huh. which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. You see that? That's what it's supposed to be for. Ease and long life. But, of course, the world try to do it the same thing, but they use unclean things to try to prolong your life. That ain't dope. They supposed to pray to God and make God God their hand to help you prolong your life and ease the pain that you may be going through. Read. He that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. You see that? And will, will it be for the good? Those are things you got to think about. Those are things you got to think about because you fall into the hand of the physicians and on a lot of our people cases, they got to go to the doctor for dementia. They got to go to the doctor for a heart transplant. All these other things they get from the block arteries, from the health, from the things that they are consuming. All right. From clean and unclean beasts. You got to know what God says clean. All right. All right. Give me the next video. Uh, the next TikTok. Let's get that. Yes. Shrimp. Shrimp is a food. Shrimp are dirty, dirty, dirty. They are filters. They eat poop. They eat debris. They eat their bottom feeders. Other fish will swim underwater to shrimp so that shrimp can clean all of the nasty stuff and the debris out of their teeth. And so we eat shrimp. And now we're eating everything that that shrimp ate. And that causes inflammation, toxicity in our bodies. You see, there are certain animals that aren't fit for consumption. And if you are religious, you read the Bible, like it talks about these foods. There's a reason why God doesn't want you to eat shrimp, doesn't want you to eat lobster, it doesn't want you to eat chicken, it doesn't want you to eat pork. All of these animals, they're bottom feeders meaning that they're at the bottom of the food chain and they will eat anything. They were put on this earth not to be food. These animals were put on the earth to keep it clean. And so we're not supposed to eat them because we don't want to become filled with the toxins and the trash and whatnot. If you're going to eat meat, keep it to grass fit. Get it from a farmer if you can. The cow's going to be cleaner. It only eats grass, you see? All of these other things, it's not meant to be food. So stop eating it and stop treating it like it's food because it's not. Shrimp. All right. So as you can see, the brother had a bag of shrimp in his hand. <laughs> a bag of shrimp in his hand saying that it's unclean for you. Then he started naming off things that are unclean for you and the way that they eat. But then he threw in chicken. Now. You will have to definitely understand God's dietary law in order to say that. So that goes to show you that he had some type of understanding about what's clean and unclean, but not everything. Because you will have to go in and see that if the chicken is clean or if the chicken is not clean. Okay? So that's one bone that, yeah, he, he did not get that part right when it comes to the dietary law. But everything else he was on point with, where well, you cannot eat seafood. Because that's the name of his little video. Seafood and pork is bad for you. But then he threw in chicken. All right, brother was off right there. But uh, I just wanted to get the points that seafood, um, like crawfish, crabs, 
things like that are unclean to you. Yes, he had points. Like I say, they are bottom feeders. All of that is in the Bible. We're going to get to it. Uh, now, let's go back to the swine real quick. Let's go back to the swine. Give me Leviticus chapter 11. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Come on. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he chew it not the cud. He is unclean to you. So the Most High God told you that he's unclean to you. And the sister said that she didn't even use, in her little hashtag, didn't even use religion. But God had already established that. So now look, generations and years and years and years later, decades later, our people think that they have knowledge more than God. But we have to follow his laws, his commandment. He created the animal. He said that animal is unclean. All right, come on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. He said, of their flesh shall ye not eat or consume. That brother said something about you get toxics as well. The same thing that she did her research on, that they give off toxins. Go ahead. And their carcass shall ye not touch. Come on. They are unclean to you. Read. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters and the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Okay, we're going to get a visual of that. Come on. And all that have no fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. God said that if they don't have these things, fins and scales, they are abomination to, unto you, meaning you should not eat them, consume them. Read. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Uh -huh. Ye shall not eat of their flesh. Ye shall what? Ye shall not eat of their flesh. Read. But ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. You see that? Their carcass is an abomination. So that's what the Most High God said when it comes to the swine, when it comes to those without fins and scales, how they're unclean to you. He laid the foundation that goes to show you how we discontinue from our heritage these laws, statutes, and commandments that God gave unto us. We're the ones supposed to be following this. The hell what the world doing. These are our standards. Okay? All right. So now give me that next link. Uh, Yes. Let's read this. I, this is something I looked up according to the, um, the swine. The swine. Watch this. Oh, no. Not, that's the one? All right. Yeah, let's get him. Let's get him. You gotta stop eating pork. Even in the Bible, it says that you should not eat swine, which is pork. And a lot of people have been finding parasites literally crawling outside of their pork, y'all. Eating pork is causing cancer. Pigs literally eat anything. They'll eat dead animals, they'll eat humans, they'll eat anything that comes in their way. And the way that a pig's digestive system works, if they eat poisons or toxins, it stays in the fat of their body, which is in all the bacons or pork foods that people eat. So, hey, stop eating pork. Yahweh is coming. Stop eating pork, y'all. Right, the brothers say that <laughs> Yahweh is coming, stop eating pork. So it goes to show you that he must have said that. That, bro that brother believed most of God said that. All right, you got to quit consuming these things. All right, hey, read that 1 Corinthians. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Uh-huh. If any man defile the temple of God. How can you defile the temple of God? By the things that you put in the temple of God. The things that you put in your body, the things you consume, the things that you eat, the things that you consider a delicacy, those things are defiling your temple, your body. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Right, because what he told you, these things, their carcasses, shall be an abomination unto you. Those unclean things. All right. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Ye are not your own. So many people think that they can do whatever they want to do. Far, far, far from the truth, my people. We got to understand what God wants us to do, what the Most High called us to do. 
because he, he called us what his favorite, his chosen, his servants. That means that we do what he, what he require of us. If you had a servant, you would expect your servant to do what you want them to do. Or you ain't going to keep them around. That's what he's talking about by destroying us. He's not going to keep us around, which means allow us to inherit the kingdom if we're not obedient. If we're not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. Come on. Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So he said ye are bought with a price. And that price was his son laying down his life for the children of Israel to have a way back to the Most High God, to have favor with him. He's that mediator between us, okay? And that's how we've been bought with a price, all right? Uh, from there, give me that link of the chitlins. All right, so now, this is what I was saying what people would take as a delicacy. Let's read that. Chitterlings, sometimes spelled chitlins mm -hmm. or chitterlings, are the small intestines of domestic animals. They are usually made from pig's intestines. They may also be filled with a forced meat to make sausage. Intestine from other animals such as beef, lamb, and goat is also used for making chitterlings. Etymology and early usage. Chitterling is first documented in Middle English in the form of cheaterling. Circa 1400, various other spellings and dialect forms were used. The primary form and de derivation are uncertain. A 1743 English cookery book, The Ladies' Companion, or An Infallible Guide to the Fair Sex, contained a recipe for calves' chitterling, which was essentially a bacon and opal uh, sausage in a calf's intestine casing. Right, holy. So that's when you can also get your um, pork sausage from, right? So let's read. Let's roll down. So now, now we're gonna get into the traditions of it. So you have traditions from. Let's just read the bold letters of them as you roll up. Go ahead. United Distribu Kingdom. Keep rolling. United Kingdom. Uh huh. So these are different ways, different places they have the traditions in it. Read. The Balkans, Greece, and Turkey, uh -huh. Spain, uh -huh. France, uh -huh. Latin America, and the Caribbean. You see that our people got all kinds of ways that they use this stuff in J different in different parts of the earth. Read Jamaica, uh -huh. Mexico, uh -huh. Asia, uh -huh. China, read Japan, Come on. Korea, uh -huh. Philippines, New Zealand, United States. There we go. That's where we want to get to right there. The United States. Come on, let's read. In the southern United States, chitterlings, commonly called chitlins, are part of the culinary tradition of soul food. Uh -huh. Chitterlings are carefully cleaned and rinsed several times before they are boiled or stewed for several, several hours. Wow, you got to do all of that with this pig intestines, Read. A common practice is to place a half onion in the pot to mitigate the very unpleasant odor. Ooh, that's from all the toxins and stuff in them. All them dead carcasses he been eating. Read. That can be particularly strong when the chitterlings begin to cook. Chitterlings sometimes are battered and fried after the stewing process and commonly are served with apple cider vinegar and hot sauce as condiments. In 2003, nope, the sp drop down to 65. In 1965, blues harmonica player and vocalist Junior Wells recorded a song, Chitlin Con Man. See, look at our people. They love chitlin so much. Look, they was making songs about this unclean beast. Chitlin Con Carney. Come on. On his acclaimed Delmark Records album, Hoodoo Man Blues, jazz guitarist Kenny Burrell recorded the unrelated jazz blues, Chitlin Con Carney, on 1963 Midnight Blue, covered by others including Stevie Ray Bond and Double Trouble on The Sky is Crying. Other notable blues songs with reference to chitlins were recorded in 1922, excuse me, 1929 by Peg Lee Howell, Chitlin Supper. You see that? That's all, they, they loved it. So they made songs about it over and over and over again in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 60s. They continue made songs about this stuff. Come on. And in 1934 by the Memphis Jug Band, Rucas Juice and Chitlin. Gus Jenkins, Johnny Otis, and Arthur Williams have also recorded songs with a reference to Chitlins in their title. In 1996, 
Nikki Giovanna referenced Chitterlings in her poem, Poem for a Lady Whose Voice I Like. Wow, talking about Chitterlings. Now, let's get that other um, definition with the Chitterlings. Roll it up. You know, you got it? It's that next one. Yeah. All right. No, stay there. Stay there. Yeah, that one. That's what I want. Yeah. Let's read the top one and that one. We're going to read both. Scroll back up. Yeah. Scroll it back down. Put, yeah, I want that part, but roll it down. Yeah, we're going to read both. Okay. Chitlins, also called chitterlings, are the large intestines of swine, hogs, but can also come from calf or veal. Right, and some of those, the calf and the veal, you can see in other, the, like um, in the Car Caribbeans, they be using the goat. So that's why I was like, we rolled through it. We just read the titles of those different places because some of those places use the calf or the veal. Go ahead. Chitlins are typically either slow cooked or fried, but because they are labor intensive to clean and prepare, chitlins are often reserved for special occasions. That's right there. <laughs> Because it takes so long to clean it, they use it only for special occasions. All right, so now let's read this next one. Roll it up. Will you stay there? There you go. Let's roll it right there. Read that. Why did people start eating chitlins? Okay, so that's the. I wanted to. Look, I wanted to know this. A lot of people had already understood this, but we wanted to make it be known right here today why people start eating chitlins. Come on. Why did people start eating eating chitlins? The history of chitterlings in, so in Southern culinary traditions began when, at hog butchering time, slaves were given the leftovers by their slavers and had to make do with neck bones, snouts, feet, and other less desirable parts. The slaves used the intestines to make a dish that became a staple in soul food cooking. Okay, so now go to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse Three, Deuteronomy 14 and 3. So now, as you see, we see a lot of articles and little short videos on what we should not be eating. Okay? And only one brother talked about it in a religious fashion. Y'all, it's coming, so you better stop eating it. Okay? But you always got to keep in mind that it's all about God's commandments, what he commanded us to do. All right? So he commanded us what we should eat. And should not eat. That never changed. That never changed. That's why you hear that old saying. Um, and people say it when they mad. I, I, I usually hear people refer to it when they mad. God, God forgive, I don't. You know? And, you know, man going to change on you, but God don't. They try to use God where they want to. I hear it all the time. But guess what? They right. God never changed. All right? He never changed. So now, let's read this real quick. Show you that he never changed. Because he said it, and this is what it's, it was established throughout your generations. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. So God said it. He never changed that. He never went back and said you can eat whatever you want to eat. It never happened. So now, let's get up the image. Let's get up that image while we read these scriptures. Come on. These are the beasts which you shall eat. The ox, the uh -huh. sheep, uh -huh. and the goat, uh -huh. the hart, uh -huh. and the roebuck, uh -huh. and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pygarg, and the wild ox, and the shamos, and every beast that parted the hoof. You see that? There go right there. And every beast that parted the hoof. Read. And cleave it the cleft into two claws, and chew it the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Okay, so now. Right there, uh, what verse you at? Uh, verse 7. Verse 7. Whole 7. We're going to read 7 again. Now let's read this up here about the cud. Animals that chew the cud, such as cattle, deer, goats, cows, oxen, giraffes, and sheep. Cud is the food bought up into the mouth from the first stomach called the rumen and chewed again. Right, so now it's showing you how they digest their food. And pigs don't do this. The unclean animal don't do that. Even some of the animals with the parted hoofs don't do that. All right, so you got to know the difference on what you can and cannot eat. God gave you the blueprint, all right? Not the world. The Most High God did. Let's go back and read verse 7. 
Yeah, six and seven. And every beast that parted the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Come on. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the cloven hoof. Uh huh. As the camel and the hare and the coney, for they chew the cud but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. Therefore, what? Therefore, they are unclean unto you. Most High God said it. So from the time he said it, that was the law. That law never changed. Just like thou shalt not kill. Everybody understand that one. Thou shalt not kill. Everybody understand that. But they understand the Sabbath. They don't understand the dietary law. They never change. You can put that right in the same category that they never change. Keep the Sabbath throughout your sin generations. This shall be unclean unto you, and thou shalt not kill. All the same laws that God never change. Okay? Uh, from there, let's go to Acts. Chap yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You know, officer, I, I don't know why they would think this law would change. I mean, if it was unclean for our bodies then, right. what's about our body has changed? Right. It's unclean for our bodies still today. Exactly. That's why we was reading about the um your body is the is the temple of God. Showing you that he wants you to preserve it the way he wants you to reserve it. He preserved it. He pres he he created you. He created the animal. He said these are the animals you can put in you, these are the animals you should put in you. Now you come, the man, man come around and say, out of these two, God say we can't, can't. You know what? I bet this one will taste good if we mix it with some, some cauliflower, if we mix it with some seasoning. Man come around and turn to do God already said, this is what you should put in your body. This is what you should not put in your body. I created you. You see, that? it's just that simple. But people make the word of God so hard and complicated to follow when it's not. That's why we got scriptures like um, uh, Psalms. Um, 111 and 10. You get this understanding by keeping his commandments. How you be converted? By keeping the commandment. How you be changed? How you repent? By keeping his commandments. Okay, coming back to all the laws that he set before the children of Israel. All right, go to Acts. Let's read this real quick. This is the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 10, 10 mm -hmm. and verse 10. Come on. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. All right, so some of you who may have not read about this before, this is Peter when he came into the house of Cornelius. So now he fell into a trance. But he already just said to you that uh, we already just read how God gave us laws, statutes, and commandments. And Peter understood that. These are things that he shouldn't eat and things that he should eat. He was following that. Okay, let's read. He fell into a trance mm -hmm. and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending in unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Come on. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Right. So he understood about the things of the wild beasts and the fowls and creeping things that he should and should not eat. That's why we read those things. Showing you, now he see this vision of these things. Read. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. You see that? When he seen those beasts in that trance, he said, I ain't never ate anything common or unclean, unclean or common. That's because he was following the dietary law. Read. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Nope. Uh, drop down to, that was 14. Give me six, uh, 26. Verse 26. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. So now, this is his encounter with Cornelius. Read. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. So and that was that was the vision of the the beast, the creeping things. It was a trance. God was showing him something. So now he's seeing all manner of people now, just like he's seen all manner of beasts and creeping things uh, and uh, fowls. Read. And he said unto them, "Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company 
or come unto one of another nation. Right, because they was uh, from the northern kingdom, so it was a split. Okay, read. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You got to read that again. God had what? But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. He said that God showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You know what? I'm pretty sure that as the most High God was dealing with him, Peter was growing in the spirit. So he understood those things. He always reflected back on those things that Christ had taught him. Feed the sheep. The time when the, the disciples were with Christ in John chapter 4. And he was dealing with the woman of Samaria, of, of another nation. He, he, all of these things was coming back to his remembrance. He called him the cornerstone. Okay? All right. So, uh, from there, give me 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. All right. So, Peter said he ain't never eat anything common or unclean. Unclean or common. Read. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Read. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, so now in that time, it happened. Paul said it was going to happen. And guess what? Even in our time, in our generation, the same thing is happening. Our people are giving heed to seducing spirits. And um, in these latter days, they're departing from the faith. All right? Going back to these abominable things, consuming these things, which they know that God had already told them not to do. They understood it. They embraced it. They rehearsed it. Okay, read. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Come on. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Right, right. So, who, what practice that uh faith religion catholics the roman Catholics, they practice this type of thing abstaining from meats but what did god say matter of fact he said that they uh with thanksgiving to them which believe and know the truth so our people understood it but they departed from it watch this give me the truth which believe and know the truth psalms 119 this is what they understood this is what peter understood Come on. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Uh-huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Come on. And thy law is the truth. So he said that they know the truth, believe and know the truth. He said thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So God law say this is what's clean, this is what's unclean. Okay? But now, let's go back, read verse 4, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy four. Mm -hmm. chapter 4 and verse 4. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be, re to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Okay, so he said every creature of God is good, because he told you, these shall you eat, and these shall you not eat. So these are good for what he created them for, and these are good what he created for. So why in the heck did he tell Noah, put these in here by seven, put these in here by two? Why did he tell him that? Because he had a purpose for them, all right? And he already then told you what you can consume and what you can't consume, what's clean and what's unclean. Come on. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. It is what? It is sanctified by... By the word of God and prayer. So how is it sanctified? How is it sanctified? Give me that in John 17, 17. What did it mean that he sanctified it? What did he sanctify it with? Okay, come on. This is the book of John, chapter 17 and verse 17. Come on. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So he sanctified it. Let's go back to Timothy 4 and 5 one more time. First Timothy. So he said sanctify sanctify it uh sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth so god been established these things already come on this is the book of first Timothy, chapter four and verse five come on for it is sanctified by the word of god and prayer 
it is sanctified it is sanctified through thy word through the word of god and prayer so it's going into what real simple my people the dietary law the things that he said we can consume the things that he said you can eat the things that he said which are clean all right drop down to leviticus chapter 20 and start at verse 23 Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. All right, so he sanctified it through his word. His word said what's clean, and his word said what's unclean, and what you can consume, and what you can eat, and what shall be abomination unto you. Okay, so we still got to follow these things today. All right, and if you have any questions, we have so many different classes, so many different leaders you can reach out to to continue to explain these things to you. Come on. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 23. Read. Ye shall, ye shall therefore keep all my statutes Read and 23, all. 23. And this is the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation, uh -huh. which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. So he hate them for the things that they do. He abhorred them for the things that they were doing. All right. Now we're talking about everything that they do that's why it says in proverbs 331 don't don't envy the oppressor the things that they're doing okay we got to be um faithful and loyal to god commandments read but i have said unto you ye shall inherit their land and i will give it unto you to possess it a land that floweth with milk and honey uh -huh. i am the lord your god which have separated you from other people that's one point he said i separated you from other people Read. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean. Wait a minute. I, 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 what, Pastor, I ain't never read this before? Where did you get off thinking that you could eat anything you want? Why haven't you read God's laws about it, what he said about it? Read that again. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean. Come on. And between unclean fowls and clean. Read. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground. You see, so he named everything, the beast, the, fl the fowls, and those things that crawl on the ground, on the earth. He put a difference. You should know it. You got to learn these things. Okay. Observe his laws. Read. Which I have separated from you as unclean. Uh-huh. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. You should be his. That's why he said, you've been bought with a price in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And you, your body is the temple of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You are mine is what he said. And guess what? He wants you to carry yourself the way he commanded you. That's the bottom line. That's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's what he created us to do. That's why he severed us from other people. That's going to prove us as if, if we're obedient to him or not, if we love him or not. That's what the Bible says, how Israel showed that they love God, because they'll walk in his commandments. So that's what, that's what we want our people to get. Okay, we got a couple more things we want to show you. Let's get the next one. Don't eat shellfish. Don't eat shellfish. You ready over there, IT? All right, so he told us don't eat shellfish. Remember, things that are the beasts, the fowls, and the things in the sea, all the things that creep it up on the ground. Watch this. So he got several points in here. Uh, one point, he's going to talk about the crab. He's going to talk about the lobster. He's going to talk about um, even, I believe he's even going to touch uh, shrimp. Yeah, so he talked about all of those things, crab, lobster, and shrimp. All right, go ahead. Let me turn this smile upside down because I got some really gross, really gross things to tell you. This is the reason why you shouldn't eat shellfish. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before, before you, you change my video. I'm not no religious nut. I'm not Jewish. I'm not even Muslim. I'm actually just a Chico from Florida. 
And I was born on an island. My dad was a commercial fisherman. And he used to hunt lobster. You know what I mean? So, this ain't no bias, no bias thing or anything like that. All right? But the real reason why you shouldn't eat shellfish is, uh, frankly, they're just bugs. Yeah. They're in the same category and the same family as bugs. Ugh, gross, right? Shrimp. Everybody loves shrimp, right? You might as well eat a cockroach because it's the same thing. I look at a shrimp. I look at a cockroach. There's no difference. Just one lives on land and the other one lives on the sea. All right? Bro, it's just disgusting when you think about it. I mean, I mean, they don't even look. I mean, they're scavengers. They, they're in the bottom of the ocean and they... They eat all the waste. So, what do you think happens when you use the bathroom? You know where it goes, right? It goes to the ocean. Something has to eat it, right? You think it was the groupers or the, the swordfish? You think a shark's eating your crap? No, man. It's shrimp, lobster, and sea bugs. Yeah. It's disgusting. Now, let's take lobster, all right? I grew up on lobster, okay? You know, <laughs> you think about it, they're just sea scorpions. I mean, they, they look like scorpions. I, look at the comparison. Scorpion, lobster, all right? You make the judge. I mean, they all got exoskeletons. They're um, anthropods. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not too sure, but oh well. Now, but everybody loves lobsters. Lobsters so good. Lobsters. And I know people from Boston and Maryland. They're going to hate me on this. Even people from Florida. All right. Everybody loves their lobster. But when you think about it, yeah. It, yeah. It's disgusting. I mean, I mean, to eat a crab, the, the way it brings in a, a hammer and some drilling tools, just to eat some bug meat. Oh, it's, it's nasty. I mean, and lobsters, uh, man. Oh, man, those lobsters. I mean, they, they're so weird looking. I mean, check it out. All right, so just want to touch a couple of things throughout that video, what he talked about, okay? He talked about the crabs, the lobsters, the shrimp, and how we shouldn't be consuming these things. Uh, you know what? In one point, he did even talk about... Uh, I think he said Muslims and um, the uh, Jewish people, something like that. He talked about them, how um, he see why they don't do it, all right? But, of course, these things are already written in the Bible. Matter of fact, um, let's get uh, Leviticus. Leviticus 11 and start at verse 9. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 9. Put up that visual. Give me the visual, that image. You know what I want? That picture? There we go. Yes, sir. Come on. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Uh-huh. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas. So and now we got an image on the screen with fins and scales. This is the type of fish that you should eat if it don't have these things what did god say because he the one gave the law his law is truth he sanctified us through his law read and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters they shall be an abomination unto you come on that means just like he said earlier and um what uh chapter in verse seven when he talked about the swine in Leviticus chapter 20 and chapter 20. Okay, read. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Read that again. They shall be 
even an abomination unto you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not eat of their flesh. He said, ye shall not eat of their flesh. That's why the young man was talking about, ugh, nasty. Because we shouldn't eat of their flesh, read. But ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever have no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. All right, now roll it up. Now let's look at the other things that the, uh, yeah, right there. Now. Look at these unclean seafood commonly eaten. Let's read this up. Unclean seafood commonly eaten, catfish, crab, lobster, shrimp, shark, clams, squid, octopus. So he said that we should not eat these things. We should not consume them. That's what God said to us, the children of Israel, okay, that we should not consume these things. But guess what? The world think you can. Now, let's get that next little video real quick. Can Christians eat shrimp? That's a question now. Can Christians eat shrimp? Okay. Now, we're going to get man saying. Let's go. Can believers eat shrimp? Nope. Is it true? If you are a Christian, you can't eat shrimp? Let's see. In that guy's video, he did show a scripture in the book of Leviticus showing that it is against the Levitical law to eat shrimp. But in Mark 7, 19, Jesus deemed all food to be clean because it is not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out. So according to the New Testament, according to Jesus Christ, all food is clean and able to be eaten. Dang. He said according to Jesus, all food could be consumed. And eating. Hey, real quick, I had this in my note. Give me that in, uh, I believe it's John 7 and 30, 7 and 16 and 6 and 38. Give me them two scriptures back to back. 7 and 16, Gospel John, 7, 16 and 6 and 38. Watch this. This is the book of John chapter 7 and verse 16. Come on. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. Wait a minute. So Jesus came and said that you could eat every. No, 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 no. Now, you, if the first thing that should catch your eye is look at him with those baby blue eyes. That's the first thing that should catch your eye. Then look at him with his blonde hair. Wait a minute. He's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And he is trying to come and persuade you that you could eat anything because Jesus came and changed everything with his soft voice. Read that again. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. The doctrine is God's laws. That's Read. right. But his that sent me. Come on. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You see that? Wait a minute now. Hold that last one and give me that one in um, 2 John and verse 9. The gospel 2 John. The gospel, Second John, in verse nine. So he said, it, "You gonna know if if it's mine that I'm speaking, or him that sent me. Is it God's words, or is it my words?" Now let's see if Christ came with anything different or new. Watch this. This is the book of Second John, verse nine. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, have not God. So you got to be abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Ain't that what that brother just said? Doc? Talk to me. No, 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 talk to me. Yes, that's what he said. He also. just said, Jesus said you can come and eat anything. That's what he just that said. Was. Read that again. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ have not God. So you ain't got God if you're going to break anything Christ said. But Christ just said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Read. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Father. And the son. Why? Now give me John 6 and 38. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ had the father and the son. Watch this. Come this, on. This is the book of Mark. Chap nope. John nope. 6, 38. John 6, 38. I got you. Out. So he said, if you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have both the father and the son. Why? Why? Let's hear what Christ had to say. Read. This is the book of John chapter 6 and verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will. Wait a minute. He the brother just said Christ came to do whatever he wanted to do. In so many words, that's what he was saying. But he didn't understand the doctrine. Come on. For I came down from heaven not to or do my own will. Or he didn't understand the parables that Christ was given. Read that again. 
For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Man, Christians, y'all better y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up and start keeping God's commandments, especially if you if you Israel. It's time to repent. Now let's get this Mark 7, what he brought out. Jesus said in Mark 7 that you can eat whatever you want. I don't even remember what he said. The <laughs> devil. Yeah, the devil said that. Okay, now let's get the understanding on this. All right, let's read, start at verse 14. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 14. Because a lot of people like to jump right down and it's not what come what go in the man that defile is what's come out. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. But Christ is giving a parable. Let's watch this what Christ said in this parable. Come on. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me. Listen every, unto me. Every one of you and understand. See, that's the point right there. Don't just read it or paraphrase it. He said understand. Read that again. I and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Come on. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. Come on. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. Now, we got to understand what is he talking about. It's a parable. What go in you and what come out of you. Read. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. He just said that. If any man understand, hearken and understand. Now he said, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Let him understand. Read. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So they didn't understand what he meant by that. Read. And he said unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Because he told them, listen, understand what I'm about to say. He was giving them a parable, and it was an understanding behind it. Now he's going to explain it, try to explain it to his disciples a little bit more plain. Read. Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Come on. Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly. Read. And goeth out into the draught. Read. Purging all meat. Come on. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Okay, now he's going to be more pacific with them. So he gave them the parable and an understanding of what, what did you eat? Because they already knew the things that they should and should not be eating. Okay, so that wasn't even a topic. Come on. For from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. So now he's telling them he's very pacific what is in a man from what come out of a man is what defile you. This is what he was talking about. He was not talking about eating unclean food or eating whatever you want to eat. He was not talking about that at all. Read that again. I For from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. So he said what come out of a man is what defile him. That's what he said. Listen and understand. What come out of you is what defile you. He said it again to his disciples. Y'all don't understand? It's not what you eat that defile you coming out of the drought. He said, but what come out of a man, read that again. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts so this is what come out of a man that defile him his evil thoughts come on adultery come on fornication read murders read thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness an evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness now he's going to conclude his thoughts on what he was telling them to understand read all these evil things come from within and defile the man. How can you get food out of that? He just told you what defiles you. What come out of you is evil thoughts, blasphemy, and, 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 and in conclusion, the works of the flesh. Okay? These things defile you. Okay? You can go to Galatians and read about those things. All right? Uh, so from there, let's go to Isaiah. No, we got one more clip, right? Or did we, did we look at that one? That last clip? Yeah, let's look at that one real quick. Here's why you shouldn't be eating shrimp anymore. So it may be hard to believe because you've been eating this delicacy for such a long time you think it tastes really good. But did you actually know that they're related to cockroaches? Let me show you. 
So as you can see, they're members of the phylum arthropoda family. They both share the same characteristics. So they share the same legs, the same outer shell and skeleton. And also they're both bottom feeders. When you have the roaches in your house and you see them scavenging for food, do realize that shrimp are doing the same thing at the bottom of the ocean. And then they come to your plate, you cook them, you steam them, and you think it tastes so delightful and they're eating the same trash that these roaches be eating that you hate and despise and don't want to be around your house at all. Think about it next time you eat a piece of shrimp. You're welcome. Wow. So he just gave you some tips on this unclean thing. It's a bottom feeder. Okay. It has a purpose. Everything that God made has a purpose. Hey, uh, real quick, give me that one in um, Leviticus. 11, 46, and 47. I don't think we read that one. Let's read that one real quick. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, and verse 46. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, so now he said this is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and everything that creepeth, and moveth upon the waters, and creepeth upon the earth. This is the law. So he already ran it down to him in the whole chapter of 11. Also gave it to you in De De Deuteronomy chapter 5. As well as in Exodus. We read chapter 20. Read. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So you should never, ever, ever, ever get it wrong. Because he gave you the outline of what's clean and what's unclean. He gave you the outline of what's clean and what's unclean. So if you go contrary to that and you try to make an uh, unclean animal clean... That's contrary to what God said. Read 46 again. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Come on. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. That's what God said. How are you going to change that? He said you're going to make a difference in between what could be eaten and what could not be eaten. According to the, the um, demonstrations that he gave you, according to the examples that he gave you in the Bible, he told you what you can consume and what you cannot consume. So I ain't no guesswork with the Most High God. Give me Isaiah chapter 66. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. Right. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Okay, this is the Lord's judgment day. Come on. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Come on. To render his anger. To, his, to do what? To render his anger with fury. Uh-huh. And his rebuke with flames of fire. So he's coming for vengeance. He's coming for destruction. Read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. You see that? For with fire and by his sword, he's going to be destroyed. Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the what? And the slain of the Lord shall be many. He ain't coming playing no games. Read. They that sanctified themselves and purified themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh. Because he told you, do not eat this. He gave you the laws, what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. Read. And the abomination and the mouse. And the rabbit. Shall be consumed together, said the Lord. You see that? You eating these things, you're going to die. Not like the woman was saying with six reasons why you should not eat these things. But because the Most High God said you shouldn't eat these things. Last scripture, last scripture. Give me that second Ezra, chapter 8, and start at verse 26. So God laid down the law. We just got to follow it. As the leaders, we enforce it. We tell you. We bring it to you. We cry aloud. We let it be known. Read. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 8 and verse 26. We're the watchmen. So we're going to obey our God, like Peter said. Should we be, rather obey God or man? Okay? We're going to tell it to you, just like they told the scribes and Pharisees. Read. Oh, look not upon the sins of thy people, but on them which serve thee in truth. So he said, don't look upon the sins, Lord. But on them that, so he's asking for mercy for those who, who honor his commandments. Read. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in afflictions. You see that? We, want, we keep in his testimonies that he left. 
All these things he gave for a testimony to us. That's why we always bring out Romans 15 and 4. Read. Think not upon those that have walked faintly before thee, but remember them which according to thy will have known thy fear. You see that? According to his will, just like Christ came and, and said he fulfilled his will, same as we. We got to fulfill his will. Read. Let it not be thy will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, uh -huh. but to look upon them that have clearly taught thy law. And that's where you want to be. You want to clearly teach God's laws without wavering, without saying, okay, well, you can get away with that. No, God said it. That's what we got to uphold. We clearly teach his laws, just like he talked about it in Nehemiah 8 and 8. All right, well, hope y'all got some out of this dietary law, what you can eat and what you cannot eat. All right, that's the law of God. And he brought his prophets back on earth to continue to rehearse these things to our people so they can rehearse it in their lives. All right, so with that, Israel, I'm Officer Micah out of Houston Camp. This is Officer Atniel. And we got Soldier Joseph over there. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom, Israel. <laughs>